Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream. Today is October the 8th. I'm going to do your spiritual principle a day in a meditation. I hope that you're having a beautiful morning. Speaking of hope, I'm brought to you by Hope Through Navigation, and this is our Hood Recovery Services. You can reach me at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and get into that meditation. Spiritual principle of day. All right. October 8th, accepting others. Our attitude ought to be one of loving acceptance toward all addicts, regardless of any other problems they may experience. That comes from It Works, Tradition 3, Applying Spiritual Principles. Many of us crawl into our first meetings totally paranoid and not having bathed for weeks or fresh from getting high in the hallway bathroom. Or we're surrounded by a 50-foot concrete wall with don't even think about talking to me, graffitied across it. Others slink in with a court card, counting days until they can get back to the business of getting and staying high. Still others waltz in, heads held high with enough entitlement, defensiveness, and been there, done that, to fill all the dried up wells in hell. Tradition 3 tells us that the only requirement for NA membership is a desire to stop using. It calls on members to welcome anyone who enters the room. I want to reread that. It calls on members to welcome anyone who enters the room. But how do we know that someone else really has the desire to get clean? How do we measure it? We can't. No addict is a sure bet for staying clean, and none of us can predict the future. We all know that perpetual newcomer who everyone thought would never get it until they did. And what about the other situation we never saw coming? The revered old timer who helped countless newcomers to dismantle their 50-foot walls, did every service commitment, and was the most beloved circuit speaker until they relapsed. Hmm. It's human nature to judge each other and compare ourselves to determine where we fit. But it's only our personal recovery that we can truly assess and take responsibility for. And one of the most important measures of that recovery is our willingness to accept others for who they are, not for who we think they should be, just as we were accepted. Despite my judgment, I will practice our third tradition by accepting and welcoming others, regardless of their appearance, circumstances, or reputation. Let's take a moment of silence so that we can let that settle in, followed by the we version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. Thank you, God. Grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. You know, right now I'm deeply emotional 
having read this meditation, this spiritual principle of acceptance and inclusiveness, and basically the main point of this principle is to be non-judgmental, to love others, right? I'm deeply emotional, having said uh, all of that. And I'm going to really struggle to just stay focused on topic, but bear with me. You know, because as I was reading that, I saw myself and, and, and I thank God, I thank God that I haven't seen this side of me in a while, but I saw myself at a, a meeting facility in our local area. And in the home group there pretty much had the run of the building. They were the only home group at that time. So we're probably talking about, well, I got 29 years. So we're probably talking about 20 years ago. But I saw this, this picture of myself sitting in a meeting and I did, I did not realize that I had the worst judgmental, condemning facial expression. It wasn't anything I said. It was the way I was looking at people when they would share whatever they would, were sharing. And this old timer, he does, he's, he's still in recovery, but he do, doesn't live in our area anymore. Uh, this, this old timer, uh, was visiting the home group uh, because he happened to be in town for a funeral. And when it came to his opportunity to share, he sniper shared, right? He looked directly at me the whole time he was sharing. And within his share, he said something to the effect how dare you turn your nose up at the still suffering addict? How dare you sit there with your nose held high looking at people while they share like you, you're, they're just so disgusting and you can't believe what they just said. That, that is not the atmosphere of recovery. And that is not what this home group is about. And that is not okay. We didn't treat you like that when you slid yourself into the rooms. Did we now? I can't believe this. If I was a person sitting in this home group on a regular basis, were you looking at me like that when I share? I would never come back. And just like that, the room went dead silent. The room went dead silent. I was so non-accepting of myself. I didn't love myself. And I definitely was not accepting of other people. And I had that amazed or awe look when people would share and tell the details of some of their addictive behaviors because it was not something I had ever experienced. And I mostly was just in amazement that they had the ability to share at that level. They, were, they had the ability to get that naked. But the perception the perception that my facial expression was giving was just awful. It really wasn't what was inside of me, if I think about it. Because I remember just being amazed that a person could share that level of their story so freely. 
but it was because of the atmosphere of recovery had been established so that if you came in and, and as this reading said, maybe, maybe you hadn't bathed for weeks or you had just gotten high, the atmosphere of that home group was that anyone could walk into a meeting, get a hot cup of coffee, oh, and sit down and have an opportunity for the gift of desperation to make its way into their spirit so that they could see that they too could stay clean. And when I think about that moment, it, that old timer shared, sniper shared like that. And I remember the room being so quiet. And you know what? The, why they were quiet? I'll tell you why they were quiet. They were quiet because no one believed that anyone would dare, dare talk to me that way. It wasn't because I was all of that. No, 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 no. It wasn't because of I was all of that and I had all this respect in the community. No, absolutely not. That was at a time at one of the worst stages of my life of mental illness. So it wasn't like, you know, how dare, you know, I wasn't the governor or the mayor or any, I had no position. My position was complete, spiritual, bankrupt, physically, mentally, broke down. I had been clean for years and had had a nervous breakdown. And so I was very dysfunctional. And so they were silent because they could not believe this old timer had the courage to check me and I not respond the way that I normally would respond. See, when I tell you who, who I used to be, in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous, and you listen to this podcast every day, I need you to understand that there was a major transition in my life. There was a nervous breakdown that I had at about, uh, I want to say maybe like four and a half years clean. And it took a whole nother 10 years of consistent treatment for me to be able to develop the skills. Let's see, earlier today, I talked about how I had a gift for speaking, but I almost lost it. And it was during that time period of healing my brain. I mean, my brain would just snap out and immediately, I couldn't remember what who I was, what I was doing. Like I told you, my, they told my mother she may never know who she is again. So for about 10 years, I practiced being human again. But this old timer had no awareness of my story. This old timer had no clue to what had had, had been happening with me. And what would normally happen, because I was a really big tradition person, and I was really intense about people being able to have a God of their own understanding without having to listen to this re religious dribble in a meeting. And at that time in his life, he had gone on to be a preacher. And I don't know how many meetings he made wherever he went, but generally speaking, when he was shared, he had become known for being very religious in the way that he shared. It's, I'm not making a big deal out of that because I did the same thing, right? that come to Jesus moment or come to Allah moment or come to Buddha moment. You know, we get on these pedestals religiously forgetting that 
in Narcotics Anonymous, we're not interested in your religion. We're interested in your spirituality. And so everyone in the room, this, they just went silent because typically what would happen in this state that I was in is that a table would go flying, a chair would go flying, I would charge and, and be in someone's face. I was so violent and it was a direct result of the breakdown. And in that moment, I, I did nothing. I did absolutely nothing. And I held his stare knowing that he was sniper sharing me. And I held his stare until he let my eyes go. And when he was done and realized what had just happened, he expected me to have a comeback. I didn't share back at him. When I finally felt a release of my spirit to, you know, share at all, I didn't take up my five minutes. I took about 30 seconds to say, I'm an addict seeking recovery. And I deeply apologize if I have offended anyone. I'm still a work in progress. With that, I will pass. So when we're talking about accepting others, a lot of the time we're trying to make a decision when someone new comes in or an old timer comes back, we're trying to make a decision. Is that person worth my investing in? My energy, my conversation, even my heart or my ears to even listen to them attentively? Because you see it all the time. People go to share and people all of a sudden start needing to go get coffee. That's telling you that this is a person that I don't want to listen to. Let me go get my coffee. <laughs> or side conversations. Or looking at Facebook in the back of the meeting along the wall. Or as I've seen some people doing, looking at pornography right in the meeting on their phone, laughing and showing pictures off right in the meeting. We're making a decision at that point when that person is sharing, they don't have anything that I need to hear and they're not important and they're probably not even telling the truth and furthermore, probably won't even stay. We don't say that. Come on now, somebody. I'm I'm really I'm really talking about recovery here, right? We don't say it because of course that's not that's not recovery. That's not the spirit of the third tradition, but we think it. And what we don't know, which I was not aware, but I am today, after receiving some education in the field, right? Is that we have these microfacial expressions that take place. And because we're ourselves, we're not noticing them, but other people do. And those reactions can be, uh, I don't want to say like, uh, people when they see them, this is what I'm saying, when, pe when people see our mic microfacial expressions, they think they know and understand what they mean. They're pretty universal. Surprise has a certain look. Disgust has a certain look. Anger, right? So they're pretty universal. Most people think they know exactly what that microfacial expression may be and what it means. So sometimes 
what's in us seeps out of us without our permission. I was completely unaware of how judgmental I come across in the meeting when people are sharing. And it had been going on for a long time. And maybe some people were trying to correct me or say something, but they could never get past go because as soon as they sent for me, <laughs> right? As soon as they came for me, I came back disrupting the meeting. I was so grateful when Narcotics Anonymous came out with the IP about disruptive and violent behavior in the meeting. There's many a times in early recovery, I probably should have had the police called on me. And I just, I just have to say that. I, I need for you to know and to understand that the person you're listening today is a transformed individual as a direct result of Narcotics Anonymous and the spiritual principles and applying them in all of my affairs. I had a God of my own understanding that was really, really difficult to live by before I got to the requirements to worship the God of my understanding was really difficult. Let me explain that further for me as an addict to live by because I had the disease of addiction and the standard of that doctrine and faith was so high that it was virtually impossible for any human being to successfully walk it out. So when I came to Narcotics Anonymous, much of my using was because I was feeling like a failure at trying to live a religious life. That's why the basic text says, enforced morality lacks its power, right? It wasn't until I got to Narcotics Anonymous and after the nervous breakdown and after some years of seeking regular outpatient care to assist me with my thinking. I went through so many sponsors during that time. It was ridiculous. And I probably ha had the all-time high for changing sponsors in any 15-year period of time. My emotions were still unmanageable. And it was because of the program of NA that I was able to eventually trust that I could actually have a higher power of my own understanding. I could actually revamp my understanding of God and I didn't have to be restricted by any religion or anyone else's. So the person you're listening to today, when I say I'm transformed, I, you, man. You know, we just had a celebration at a meeting, my current home group in-person meeting that I do go to regularly on Mondays. Uh, we just had a clean time celebration for me. And I was sharing pretty much the same thing I'm sharing right now. And someone actually told a story about me jumping up on a couch and kicking someone's hat off of their head <laughs> and asking everyone in the room, did I remember, do they remember when I did that? And I vaguely remember the details, but I knew that the person that I did that to, huh, I had every intention of trying to knock his block, his head off his shoulders, clean off his shoulders with my foot. Would you want to recover in a room like that? I wouldn't. And so when I say I'm deeply apologetic and I make a daily living amends to the people in the rooms, I mean it. You won't catch that happening with me today. Where are you at? I just told you my story and I told it for a reason. Where are you at with practicing?
the third tradition. Despite your judgments, despite whether or not you think a person is really ha going to stay clean, despite how they look, despite how they smell, despite everything that they've done in active addiction and some of the stuff they may have done to you, you may have used with them actually. Despite that, are you committed to practicing the third tradition by accepting and welcoming other people, regardless of their appearance, their circumstances, or their reputation? Because the foundation of Narcotics Anonymous, oh, these tears won't stop. The foundation of Narcotics Anonymous is dependent on the inclusivity of it, the unity of it in carrying a clear in a message. And only you can determine. Only like it said here, only you are actually able to determine that. And it's not your business to actually try and figure that out for anybody else. Just work on yourself today. My name is Mighty Stream and I'm excited to be with you. I thank you for listening to my stories. And I'm hoping that I'm hoping, I'm really deeply, deeply hoping that by my transparency of in disclosing how recovery has worked for me on these meditations that we're actually doing together, I'm hoping that it's helping you. I'm hoping that you're getting a feeling of interaction that takes you deeper into self-discovery for your recovery from the disease of addiction and that you're finding through Narcotics Anonymous and, and the effort that I put out that you're finding that, hmm, man, I did that too. <laughs> oh, I need to apply this pr spiritual principle we're talking about today of acceptance and being non-judgmental. The third truth. Yeah, I need to turn that up a notch. And the next time I catch myself trying to judge somebody, I'm going to invite them to coffee. Can you do that? I hope so. My name is Mighty Stream and I will be talking to you tomorrow. And in the meantime, you have a beautiful day. You have a beautiful principle, spiritual principle filled day on purpose.